receipt and appropriate action on the applications and 824 referrals received since May 2nd. Meeting of the Commission. One is uh, James Urbano regulation revision, revisions to the zoning regulations for the Town of Woodbridge proposed by the Town Plan and Zoning Commission regarding the addition of residential uses in the GB district and reinstatement of the exclusion of exempt structures on the roof that were omitted when zoning regulations were updated in 1963. And uh, James Sheck, 12 Lunar Drive, application for a special permit for a freestanding sign at 12 Lunar Drive. My understanding is that we have to uh, do a public hearing on these? Yes, sir. Okay, so, but then they got listed in a work session. Well, we're also here at the same time as a uh, conversation about um, a non-binding conversation that we've had before about what kind of what the plans are to introduce you to, to a specific project. So it gets to be, you know, we've had it from time to time, and that's yeah. just, it's just an informal conversation. Okay. Okay. So we're going to set these up for a public hearing. I'm assuming we can do that next month. Sure. Makes sense. And you know they also have, that starts triggers a process that we do where we have to notify or, or get it in the council government. Um, uh, we start a process with them saying that you know. Yeah, and so we do that before our public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. We just okay. At the same time. Same time. Okay, so we'll actually hear from them possibly by the next. We'll never do. That. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Go. Cool. All right. So, um, well, there's actually two different things here going on here. Mm -hmm. You got the regulation revision, then you have the thing on Hazel Terrace, which is, I thought, that's what our informal discussion was going to be on. Discussion will be on number th item number three. I don't know why she has it on the Okay, three. fine. Okay, as long as we're on the same page. Right. Okay, fine. All right. Takes care of that. So, um, so we've set that up for next month. We're going to move into our, our work session, and uh, Mr. Arbano, Arbano uh, is going to join us for an informal, non-binding, uninsured discussion on 18 Hazel Terrace. Yeah, there's something we're, we're missing a name tag too for that person too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Everybody else ignores them. Especially at home. <laughs> <coughs>
<clears throat> and I have the concepts here, we'll go through them. The, the most favorite concept is the residential concept, which is why uh, I'm asking to consider a zone change to permit. The other um, zone change would be to include the structure of the roof allowance that was omitted, I understand, by Scrivener's error in the, in the early 60s. But the reason for the structures on the roof allowance is because each of the concepts has a power. And I think the site, <coughs> which is a prominent site, a speaking site, uh, warrants this sort of colonial detail. And we uh, don't need to include it, but with the, the height allowance, I could include it. So, Mr. Chairman, if I, if I could interrupt. Go ahead. Um, each of you have a, a large piece of paper, which is a copy of our 1938. <laughs> <laughs> In 19, I think it's 1963, <coughs> we, the town, uh, changed from this zoning regulation to a more of a zoning regulation that we would find familiar today. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think we still struggle with the 1963 zoning regulation, which is, we're hoping that Leslie can be part of our future with that. But, but we, we have tracked this down legislatively. We've searched many, many records and found that, uh, that while they were recodifying their zoning regulations, they neglected to, to uh, insert, when they're retyping, literally, um, the number 18 in the definition section, the height of a building. And it's a, the only regulation that we have in our present, the only discussion about height Presently is is a definition of how high a radio antenna should be, uh, and this mistake has given us great source of trouble over time. Uh, we had a church that didn't have much of a steeple. Uh, it was this section that that frustrated that. Uh, a uh, we came close to having a relupa claim, which is a religious land use. Uh, they claim against us, the Zoning Board of Appeals, after great deliberation uh, uh, when we visited this issue, um, uh, uh, was able to resolve it for us. But we haven't, re we haven't put it back into our regulations yet. We can find no evidence and no record as to them deciding, we've, we've read the minutes of the Town Planning and Zoning Commission in that time frame, uh, we've read the reports from the experts that they hired to do it in 1963. There was no legislative intent to remove this this pesky height definition and get rid of it and stop steeples, churches from having steeples and and you know in, in, the, in any of that stuff. So we, we just think it was an error. And well, was it in the regulations before 1960? Yeah, before. It, it's in this 1938 document. Oh, the last that's what I was getting. Where, where is it? <coughs> Operating corner. Right there. Oh, okay. The height. So, so the typewriter ran out of ribbon. I, I can I cannot testify to the ribbon. Okay. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, but there's only 17 sections in the current when we recodified it. All the other languages. Okay. Are there. I was looking on the bottom, you know. There, like there are many 18. definitions, uh, uh, much more than that. Yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> and the, but the only one that having to do with height was admitted. Was, was, well, and there's one about radio antennas. Got it. So, um, so we have every reason to believe that, 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 that this is an error. You might find it refreshing, I know I do, because the subject of how to measure height of a building is now subject to. Uh, to a, a, another standard than this. This standard provides for, a, for the mean height of a roof, which is right. common. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, my predecessor, George Michaels, would take it to the top of the chimney. And I, I, I take it to the top of the ridge. Uh, this would allow us to have um, 
chimneys. More, more predictable results. Why do we have so many ranches with those roofs? Well, in the era, in the in, in this era, by the way, wood was just largely single-story ranch homes. Yeah, right. On flat lots. Um, so so it's, it's kind of a refreshing thing when you think about this. Is it? Is it? We, you know, we it would represent um, uh, a more modern approach to height. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and I think that it's a uh, an interesting artifact that we still have to use. So um, this is what we're having a public hearing on. Yeah. But uh, but I am kind of curious, since this is 1963 and it's 2017, we just decided to address it. Well, we did. That means everybody that got a tower in this town had to go for a, a, a variance. Mm -hmm. Or the tower was built and uh, minimized. And I can give you an example building that I built at 15 Research Drive it has a tower but it's sort of subdued and that uh, restrained not quite what it should have been but it meets the height, of, height requirement as it does hmm. interesting Well, you've seen, as, as time goes on, you know, we, uh, we, we, we take action as, 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 as the action is um, You know, we didn't change the, we only changed the, the, uh, the alcohol or at restaurants, we call it in the dev one zone until we needed it for a restaurant in the dev one zone. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not sure I would compare them. I understand what you're saying. But the fact of the matter is there used to be Woodbridge's town, so nobody came in here with a restaurant because they couldn't have a liquor license. All of a sudden they decide, oh yeah, let's put a liquor in this town. So I, it's a little different than this. Well, it's just that the events, you know, take you know, we take up the, the issue that it's events take as we we had another one recently in with this commission, uh, where where uh, 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 we found that uh, uh, in Dev One there could not could not be a, uh, a uh, certain services that we just changed the regulation to, to allow a congregate living or something like that it was um, yeah. it very much remedial. So this is a remedial action. It just happens to be um, uh, with a proposal. For a specific property that would you know, be a useful thing if you if you critical mass to bring it through. Alright. So we'll but um but we're gonna have a special so we're gonna do that next month. But you're here to talk about yes. A piece of property on Hazel. Yes. So if we could look at the the uh, concept plans. First page is the site, I kind of like site site, I said it, it's prominent, it's visible from Landon Street, Manby Road, and also from the Merritt Parkway. It's, it's a highly visible site. And it's a lot in between two buildings, uh, a significant office building and a house. And I believe this is a good example of what could be an infill project. Um, filling out the street, the, the office building, which, which I like, the architecture, which I like. So, so Brutalistic, would you call that? Brutal? Brutal. Sort of. <laughs> but it's, it's a beautiful. Brutal is not a, really a good word, you know. But that's a <laughs> type of architecture. Yeah. The, the, um, it, and it was done well. This, I think, would complement it. And if it's built right, it'll send a good signal if anybody sees it about our town. So it needs to be carefully done. The, if you, this footprint uh, respects current setbacks, 12 feet on either side, uh, 10 in the front. There's a seven foot porch, uh, porch at uh, both front and back, so it's set back a bit further than the minimum because of that. Set back another 10 feet. The 
foundation that you're looking at, that footprint, is also the parking area. So the parking is under the building. The first thing that I did when I considered this lot was do a concept study with Ron Zocher, the architect, to see if something could work here. And this is what works. Uh, In terms of grade, yeah. Yeah, 20 it, feet. Um, well, the back, if you look at the slab elevation, it would be 111, at 111. And the top of the foundation is 124 in the rear right corner. So that's a 13 foot difference in, in grade in elevation. What, what, what is this? What is this section in the back? That's what is, what is this? Uh, that's a stairway oh. uh, or, or a landing, uh, a landing for stairs, part of the stair tower. Again, this is a concept. No, I get it. I'm just okay. trying to understand it. Yep. Yeah, there's a porch across the back, as you can see. <coughs> so it's a 13 foot difference from ground level to the top of foundation, which isn't that bad. I, I invite you all, again, <coughs> I mentioned 15 Research Drive because it's a, it's a great example. That's at the foot of West Rock Ridge. It had a much steeper uh, terrain to deal with, much steeper grade to deal with. And that's an example of how to work the grade properly. The back wall, the, the building is two stories, front elevation, one story in the back. The foundation wall in the back is a retaining wall and built to be a retaining wall. Manages water, it's a, it's a good example of how to, to, to notch in the building, dealing with grades. The grades here are far more manageable than, they, uh, than what we face at, at West Rock. So, any questions on this? Should I go through the pages and answer any questions or? Uh, no, go, go, you, can go, you can go through. All right. I mean, I think that the, uh, I think that the, I mean, everybody feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. They don't, they don't ever have a problem doing that, so. But uh, I'm uh, assuming that the main thing that needs to be discussed here is the cut into the, this, this, uh, 12, 15 feet that you're cutting in because I, I, I we haven't we haven't had a great ex <laughs> experience with that. We haven't had great experiences with that. I, I know that this, this is nothing like Luciani. Yeah. I don't want to say the names, but... Um, street names. Street names, I know. Um, so I think that's... Uh, that's, that's I think that's where the uh, most questions are going to come sure. from. And I went through the site first with an excavator. There's not ledge on site, so it's, it's all cut and fill. But it's not a very... It's, it's all cut and fill, so you did test holes? No, no, just a surface view. No test holes. So aren't you a little worried, 20, how far back off the road now? Let's see, uh, back, uh, I don't know how wide the building is here, 62 feet, 72 feet. You're not concerned about going back 82 feet and checking the uh, going down 15 feet? Always, always concerned, but not afraid to deal with the uh, challenge. Um, I did an addition for a church on, on Greenway uh, three years ago, and we the church required uh, a found a cellar under the addition. Right. And four feet below grade, we encountered ledge. So we had a hydro ram there that scratched it away, and uh, we resolved the issue. So we don't anticipate, given what the excavator saw, the rock boulders on site, don't anticipate any issue here. If there is one, we deal with it. As I said, this is more manageable than the grades at, and the cut that we uh, faced at West Rock. At, at 15 Research Drive. So I invite you all to take a ride there. You can drive behind the building uh, and, and look at how we dealt with that. What's the total footprint of the building in terms of size? It's 62 feet. 62 by 96. By 96. 96. So okay. I think that's 50, okay. uh, 59, so almost 6,000 square foot, square feet. Thank you. So if you look at page two, which is again the parking plan and foundation, 15 spaces, it's the same 
combination of each concept. Porch in the front, porch in the back. Third page is page three is the, is the uh, first you're, And you're anticipating that the wall in the back is going to be a retaining, the retaining wall? Yes, it, it will be. Exactly as, as it is at 15 research track. It'll be 14, 14 inches yeah. thick, concrete, and super water. <coughs> How many units are going to be in here? Um, parking spaces? No. Uh, well, it depends on the concept. concept. So yes. Oh, I see. 13. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. So, as I said, same foundation for each concept. Okay. So, the first concept is a live concept. The zoning ordinance uh, permits motels, lodging. Um, so this, by permission and review of the zoning commission, is a possible, per, is a permitted use. Um, we, we, it, it, the concepts test the idea, and, and in designing this, which ground floor parking two stories above, we found that we exceeded the, the height requirement. So it's really not feasible, but it's an example of, it was an attempt to see if it works. Um, if you still work as a lodging, I'm talking about short-term extended stay housing. For visiting professor for a semester, somebody who's building a house needs temporary housing. Uh, I would only do this if there was a user identified up front. So it's a very speculative yeah. concept. It would require an allowance for the tower. And by the way, the proportions have to be worked out a little bit now. But, uh, these are not the elevations in the final drawing, just an idea. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But so there's only two floors. You just have dormers up in the attic space. That's right. Okay. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So for this concept, 12, 12 <coughs> parking spaces are required, 15 are provided. Well, uh, 12 is required for the units. What about, where do guests park since there's no, yeah, where do guests park here? In, in, the, in the parking structure. There's enough spaces, the 12 spaces is enough? What, what zoning says is permitted. It's what your, your ordinance says uh, is required. One space per unit. Well, this. For this, this, for this use. This, for a residential use, and we'll get to that. This is an unlikely concept that we tested. Here's the foil plan. So, in a, uh, a if it if it was a lot, you're telling me that a 12 unit motel only requires 12 spaces and where do the people that work there park and where do the people I, mean, I don't understand that at all uber <laughs> i was thinking about that like so where do, i don't even know where the uber goes now <coughs> there's, there's 15 spaces yeah so in this in this particular land there's two extra spaces so you can have two employees I mean, we can't tell people to carpool. We don't get to do that. We don't get to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. But this is clearly, these, these studies are clearly on a site-constrained lot. Well, I understand that, but they still have to work. Absolutely. Okay. So, right. so it's likely you wouldn't approve the motel or the use. Well, I'm not going to go there, but let's move on to the next one. All right. So next one is page... Uh, <coughs> page five. So it's the business concept. So this this meets the height requirement or restriction. 
but for the tower, which would need an allowance. Mm -hmm. So one level of parking under the building, an elevator from the parking level to the main, le main level, and the office space for this business concept <coughs> 4,500 square feet. And that is limited by the parking, or determined by the parking. 15 parking spaces satisfies, one for every 300 square feet satisfies the parking requirement. So this is an as of right use. This is what it would look like. Um, in this case, the dormers are functional. The, because of the parking requirements, the floor area is 25% smaller than the footprint. So because of that, it's a less efficient, more costly design. And because of the economic condition of the state of Connecticut and high taxes locally and statewide, um, a business use is not the best use to consider speculative. So unless there's a user identified up front. Right. So if we want economic development now, uh, this as of right use doesn't work. If you look at the north elevation, that's the side elevation, you can see how the grade works. You can see how the foundation steps up. Mm -hmm. And the, the foundation steps uh, in order to achieve the 50% free area so, so as not to have to mechanically ventilate the parking area. So it's the same on the east elevation. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this? No. So if you look at page six, this is uh, this shows three units, three uh, office units of, of 1,200 and roughly 1,250 square feet each. Um, it could be one one user, depending on what the, the market demands. But this is just a rendering of an office use. So page seven is what I believe works, which is why asking for the zoning to permit it. It's an owner-occupied residential concept. It's seven units, four two-bedroom units and three one-bedroom units, 1,250 square feet each. They have a, a loft. Each unit has a loft in the carved out of the attic So, so you're, you're calling this owner-occupied so that no one thinks it's going to be a rental? Correct. Well, well, because it would be a condominium. Sure. Um, it all, it, it would, so it's one and a half stories over the low, lower level parking again with an elevator. It's about 6,000 square feet on the first floor in the half story carved out of the attic. Uh, there's a, nearly another 3,000 square feet. Meets the uh, all the setback requirements, height requirements, safety tower. The uh, requires two parking spaces per unit. Uh, requires two spaces per unit. Uh, so we're providing 14 are required. We have 15 pro provided 15, so one more than the minimum. So uh, again, we can go back to where are the guests parking? Well, you require two parking spaces per. Well, if it's a if it's a husband and wife team and they both have cars, that takes care of those two spaces. True. True. Okay. And this is without looking at the possibility of creating surface parking. I'm trying not to. Where would you, where would you put that? There can be a driveway on the east side that gets closer out to the back. A level area can be created potentially. potentially. But you only have 12 feet. That's right. Well, that aside. Okay, okay. So aside from the potential, <coughs> at 15 Research Drive, for example, we created parking in the back, which yeah. ended up being a bonus. Same with 245 Amity Road. The initial plan didn't show parking along the back. We created it because the opportunity presented itself and it made sense. So in terms of uh, comments, 
So there's a precedent for the residential use. There's a mix of residences on Hazel Terrace already. Right. The structures of the roof lines, as I said, is required. I think the scenic view of West Rock Ridge and the access to the rear yard open space make this an attractive residential site. This is a little bit of editorial comment. The only bad thing is the view of the overhead power lines in the front, the transformers on the poles. I wish zoning required for all future development varying the utilities. Do you want us to start with you? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Getting an estimate from UI, they want three thousand dollars alone mm -hmm. to, to do the engineering. They'll do it by the estimate. They just charge. So looking into varying two segments. I don't know if that's realistic to consider them. Yeah. We agree with you. Um, why why does do I think residential use work? I think I don't I don't know if you agree or not, but new residences that add patrons and support the business district. Chris Alden pointed out to me that the two fifteen POCD envisions in the general business, business industrial and part of Dev One, modest increases in residential density. So apparently residential is being anticipated. So this is consistent with that desire. Uh, as a businessman who, who has a lot invested in the area, I think whatever can be done uh, in terms of economic development that adds to the tax base and relieves the tax burden for all of us is something that uh, we should try to achieve. So all of the concepts I believe have the effect of raising area property values. The residential concept is viable right now without pre-sale. So to me, it's the most realistic way to go. I also quoted the Bridge Economic Development Commission strategies for the improvement of the Bridge Village. Recommendations include encouraging infill development, diversification of key sites. This isn't. This is not a dense development. This is a seven-unit development that satisfies all of the existing requirements. But there is an example of an infill development of the That's it. Thank you. You said the size, the, the size of the apartments would be what? No, one hundred fifty square feet. That's for the one bedroom or <coughs> for? That's that's an average. That just takes the total. Square oh, and divides it by seven. Okay. Yeah. So. I don't see any being larger than 1250 unless there's a person as a, a, custom, a person comes in and wants one custom designed to satisfy a certain requirement but to be flexible. But you only see a maximum of seven units. Yes, that's it. That's all that parking can satisfy. Okay. Well, I, I think your uh, uh, challenge is uh, uh, being able to show us uh, that they're that we're not going to turn into a Luciani Street situation where sure. the project starts, you get down so many feet, and it's you know blasting or drilling twenty four seven, et cetera, et cetera. So I I, I think you're going to need to do some kind of test holes back there to figure out what's going on down there. I mean, it's not my way to get into trouble. I do encourage you all to come by 15 Research Shrine and see how an example of how it's done. Well, uh, I, I don't, I don't doubt that. I'm just saying we don't want to get in a situation where something gets started, then they find something they didn't expect, and they come back, and everybody wished for something they shouldn't have, and they got it, and now they're stuck. So this would be my. <clears throat> well, I, I've done this all my life and I don't look for trouble and um, I don't think you'd find me coming back um, anything's possible yeah well that's why I'm saying that all the I's dotted and the T's crossed are going to be pretty crucial sure. for that part
I don't think the rest of it's, I don't see an issue with the rest of it. It's just this 15 feet. I'm sorry? It's just this 15 feet of digging out. Oh, the cut? Yeah. I think, I mean, I don't know what that. <clears throat> so there's no way, Jim, of um, having any kind of uh, mixed-use development based upon the concepts that you've... Not for this concept because the, the height is, issue. And the, sorry? The height issue is another issue, too. I, we're, we're limited in terms of height, number one. Limited in terms of parking, number two. And the parking is satisfied by using the entire ground level for parking. So it works beautifully <coughs> in that respect. And I like this sheltered parking, no snow plowing to, to worry about, uh, no weather issues. Uh, it works in, for a number of reasons. Yeah, it's not a large site. No, I'm not familiar with the site. It's, it's two and a half, nearly two and a half acres, but the only usable part is That's the front. Mm -hmm. yeah. The rest is open space. What's next to this? I'm sorry? What's on the other side of this? What? There's the Albert office building, or designed by Albert. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a house on the other side, <coughs> a residence on the other side. Okay. Well, it's a tight little lock. Yeah. Okay. All set? Yeah. Any, Any other questions? Any other questions? Not at this time. No. Thanks for your time. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I can give a report on traffic. Oh, <laughs> uh, and so, hey, the activities of Scrog as of the last meeting, which yours truly attended on May 11, 2017, was a review. Uh, beginning review of the um, uh, new regional plan of conservation and development 2018 oh, right. update yeah. and a presentation by uh, the firm of my loan and McBroom oh. uh, with regard to that more to come interesting there were the other ones that did all your yes I did <laughs> as that was mentioned uh, there were uh, a number of uh, municipality uh, applications, none of which had any adverse impact on anybody else and were approved. There is another meeting this week on the 8th, which I will also attend. Beyond that, I can make no promises. <laughs> <laughs> so I will tell you, um, uh, one of the, it's, it's, uh, one of the things, uh, as long as you're there, to be listening for is what other towns are doing in in situations that are similar, not only whether it impacts us, but what sometimes are dealing about marijuana dispensaries and mm -hmm. that that kind of stuff. Like, oh, that would be a good idea for. for there was something stuff. that exciting at the last. Yeah, week. I'm sure. They did have pizza though, which was nice. <laughs> and they never told us that. Do they have food all the time? I mean, I, well, as far as, as I know, I've been gone. I've <coughs> been once, and so far. <laughs> was this a New Haven pizza establishment? It, it, not quite. It's North Haven. Uh, North Haven. Were there beverages too? There were. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> no. Well, could be. Yeah. I mean, it might be good. I mean, it, it, he's the new guy. Right. No. In my <laughs> office, they used to call the new guy something else, but he's <laughs> the new guy. I didn't haze you, and he came to my building and made it. Right <laughs> well, well, he's in the driver's seat. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to continue with uh, Leslie, if she's ready for us. Which is appropriate, she's nice. We're dealing with the bulk for the elections now. Yeah. Yes.
Good evening. We are closing in a bit. We have been, we've actually been completely through um, the chapters that have kind of the biggest substantive chunks. Um, so the other chapters that you don't have before you um, are chapters that have things like process um, that outline what the process is, what kinds of things are required for site plan submission, special exception, um, et cetera. And those are pretty formulaic. Um, the one thing that we did had not gone over yet, though, that I wanted to be sure that we did was the, I had prepared for you a bulk uh, comparison chart that looks like this, except that yours is in color. No, it's not. Um, it's in color. This was several months ago. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you don't all have it in the back pocket. This isn't in color. It's not in color, though. Nope. No. No, it's this. What's this? Page that's attached yeah. to it, not in color. Yes. Not it, in it, it, you got it as a separate sheet. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what it is, is it compares what your ex what the bulk regulations are for your existing zones and compares them to the zones that they may become. Right. So that you can look at how, oh, what's the two, relationship three, four, between right. the proposed gotcha. setbacks and the oh, existing yeah. setbacks, the proposed height and the existing height. And so the good news is that that is kind of one thing that's left of substance, and then it's going to be me cranking out all of the um, changes that we've made. Most of, many of them are done. Um, formatting the document for you to have a draft then to go through, and we'll go through the whole thing. Do, do we have to go through the definitions? We will go through the definitions. Separately, I'm sorry. Uh, we can, absolutely can do that. Uh, I like, like to leave the definitions for different. the last, as the last thing, because you don't want definitions of things in your definition section that you don't actually have, have in your yeah. document. Yeah. And you want to make sure that the things that you have in your document are, in fact, appropriately defined. And um, it is. Uh, I'm sure there's some great app out there to do something like that. When do you know. when when do you think that we can anticipate starting public hearings? My summer is notoriously a bad time, and I'm not trying to put this off, but I also think that between the time it's going to take for me to give you something that's formatted in a way that is presentable to the public, give us a little bit more time to go over things like this definition sections. Um, um, I think we could probably look at having um, an application ready to go by the end of the summer for September. And we don't meet on, on August. We don't meet on August anymore. Right. We have vacation. Hey. Um, it's unpaid. But we get it. So it's sort of like being here. <laughs> That's, and I would also like, um, you know, inevitably things will come up where it's, yeah. we okay. change this and All right. as I'm reading through it yet again. I mean, I think if we can start in September, that would be, I think that would be good to get moving along. Um, does everybody have a copy of this, at least that they can? Someone can take mine, because I have mine on the screen. Very good. <coughs> I don't know if I do or don't. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. Um, I have mine on my screen, so. Um, the columns that are darker 
are the ones that are the zones that are proposed, the columns that are lighter, are your existing. Um, there's So therefore, what is being proposed is the lot width in the th all three districts, there's no minimum whatsoever. It's there's maximums, not minimums. Correct. Okay. You'll see that. So what streets are, th what streets are these? So C, D, and... So everyone can get on the same page. Okay, C, D, and B, B. C, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, they're the more residential areas. So it's um, between Lucy and the back of Bradley. Um, it's Merritt, mm -hmm. and then B, B is up along the lake as you go further north. And this residential area? Okay. All right. Again, these are, um, and then it, it, as you look further to the right and you look at the T4, you've got GBB and Deb 1. Um, all of these are falling into line with what part of the original mission was, which is to allow for more. Um, development that is constrained in terms of its height and width. I mean, there's so that you've got the, the bulk constraints, but that you're creating areas that are going to have similar constraints in similar areas um, and to enable people to potentially um, have more development within reason than they have already, adding to the tax base really allowing your downtown to become more vibrant, um, have more development that's connected to each other without those big spaces between buildings. You're, um, feet. Your, your front yard setback, 20 feet. That's, that's more than there's now. No? For T3, maybe it is 20 feet, I don't know. Those houses on Merritt aren't 20 feet setbacks. 
the tw your the houses on merit right now, your regulations have a twenty foot minimum setback. Setback. Oh. Okay. Well, in reality, it's she's been twenty four now. Yeah, I know. Just like, and there's no lot left after seventy five. Right. Crazy. The other thing that this does is it allow it by moving those buildings up, it allows you to put that parking in the back. Yeah, no, no, I think it's a good idea. I'm, the, I'm there. Sergeant, out there. building height thirty five feet. Accessory structures at 50, uh, 20 feet height. Okay. So, but when we're going uh, to a public hearing, we're going to have some graphic diagrams. Yes. You'll have diagrams within the document itself. Right. Um, I That's think right I may have explained this earlier, but okay. some new faces. Um, <laughs> there's uh, the the diagrams go into a different. That they're much easier to manipulate in a different um, piece of software than it is. It's much easier to manipulate a lot of this stuff in Word um, as we're going through it. The diagrams are much easier. And they're helpful, and they'll be helpful in the regs. And, and they they become part of the regulation. Yeah. In SD1, yep. you have no front yard setback. Is that deliberate? We're now uh, we're yes. under no, it's one of, actually, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you caught that, thank you. Um, no, it's something that we've talked about on occasion, and um, we had a site visit out right. there, and so it's really a question of what do you, how close up do you want those okay. buildings to be, where do you want to be relative to where you are now, um, we just want to wait back you've got pretty wide streets out there that accommodate, you know. Two lanes and two lanes of parking. Two lanes, two lanes of parking, and you can get 18-wheelers in there with great ease. Um, so the question is, what do you want to do on that? How much further do you want to allow people to build Felbert, um, which I think was, that was the consensus was to, and again, Allowing those buildings to come forward, you can have parking in the back, you can have shared parking in the back, and there are opportunities down the road for a great deal of development back there. Should that, um, you know, you want to have that to be able to say to developers, you know, we've got areas in town of varying sizes, um, if you're interested in a smaller lot, and a, you know, for something that's more retail and pedestrian oriented, you know, this is the area that it makes sense to look in, you want, want something that's um, maybe a, would be potentially have a little greater impact on. So do you have a recommendation for that? Um, I would not, my recommendation is definitely not to go less than 40, and I would even, I mean not more than 40, um, I think tired. we can go substantially less. Should we have both a minimum and maximum? The what you do in T4? You can do that. The um, when you have, I wouldn't do a minimum. I would do a maximum. Okay. So that you're not nobody can go can push back too far. I think you kind of also want them kind of lining in a line anyway, don't you? You may want it. You may want a little bit of a, uh, the ability to have a little bit of undulation. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily, but you know, between six and twelve feet, you could do. Um, you know, that's that's a pretty. I mean, that's twelve pretty feet gives you a nice sidewalk and a little bit of places to put trees. Exactly. And would 
allow existing property owners to expand their businesses significantly yep. because now, as you know, they're all pretty far set back um, without hampering the ability for them to put parking for the back. Now, are those buildings required to only be one story over there, or is that just what they chose to build? Just what they chose. Yeah, that's what I thought. Marketplace spoke to it at the time. Uh, Six to twelve. Uh, I vote for twelve, but was, so in the T three column, the setbacks for the front yard and the side yard doesn't indicate minimum or maximum. Is that an omission, or is that so that it's a standardized? Oh, sorry, those are minimum. Those are um, max. Maximum. Okay. If we could just get businesses to be moving into them. Though. Well, that's a whole other conversation. Um, and then on the side yard, I would actually um, recommend that you do either either allow a zero yard setback so that you could have buildings that actually butt up against each other, um, but you would need it may be an area that will require a master plan at some point so that you have the ability to get into the back to get to parking. Yeah, how would you do that if you had zero lot clearance? Or well, you can also do, you can have zero lot lines, but you can also do, a, you know, side line, side yards um, of 18 feet would be more than enough for two-way traffic. Um, and it's also the kind of thing where even if there was a tractor trailer that was back there, those things don't happen all the time, all day long. Right. So you don't have to do what I sometimes refer to as um, planning by fire truck. It, you don't have to make everybody comply all the time with the worst case scenario. If there's a fire, people will get out of the way. Um, nope. And the firefighters are very good at getting where they need to go. <sighs> Yeah, I, I think there should be alleys between the buildings. I mean, I think alleys, they, they, they could be kind of cool. I, only because right now that's the way you get in and out of those properties. Right. So if you were to do a total master plan and people bought into shared parking, shared driveways and things like that, you might be able to do a little bit more, but I think as long as they're separate lots, right. um, well, I mean, if you have, if we had access to the back uh, alley, but but having said that, businesses do look for obvious, easy parking for their customers. So, if you did zero, people would wonder where are they supposed to park, kind of thing. So, so I I don't really mind. You, if you look at downtown um, Madison, for instance, yeah, they have zero lot side yard setbacks all the buildings are for the yeah. most part up against each other and right. you know to go in the back <coughs> and it takes going there once or twice to know where to park um, so it is something that people will get used to uh, yeah but i think i do think you can go either way and you can put zero to 18 for side yard. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, the other thing is, what happens if you did, uh, if you're doing a shared drive where you couldn't do like nine on each one, so then mm -hmm. that would give you your 18. Yeah. 
but then it would only you you can go all the way up to nine feet, which is seems pretty good. Uh, I vote for the driveway. I'm the only one talking. So. Your opinion? No. Don't care about any of you. We have numerous experiences with great success with shared driveways. I agree. <coughs> and we have some of the worst experiences that ever with shared driveways. Um, it's, I mean, it's when it works, it's just terrific. It's, we have to, you know, at the minimal standard, we have to find a way to, to make either enforce that it works or, or, um, or make provisions in the worst case scenario. So nine feet, does nine feet give you one lane? Nine feet gives you one lane, um, one way, enough for your side mirrors if you drive carefully to not be damaged. It doesn't give you the um, it doesn't give you the tractor trailer. But if you have nine feet on each lot, then you have eighteen, right? Yes, and that's assuming your neighbor is willing to share. Play next. To the same. Well, the code is pretty much going to say you are sharing. So you think that somebody could have a nine, they could each have a nine foot setback and one guy could say, I'm not putting my driveway there? Oh, and I've one seen guy is. more interesting things happen mm -hmm. between neighbors. Mm -hmm. So then that's kind of, that could be an issue. So that's why I'm, unless you're doing a master plan for that area in particular, I would treat all of these as separate lots. I would not allow more than 18 feet on each lot, on each. Right now you have a driveway. Right now that's probably what you have. Yeah, I'll bet. So you're then talking about building to that. It, what it would do is it would restrict um, anybody who might have a U-shaped driveway from having um, two, you know, you could do that, but it, you'd have to have two nine-foot um, means of, uh, one nine-foot means of ingress, one nine-foot. So the total isn't more than 18. Nine feet's pretty tight for a single lane. So but the, the thing about adding, when you have them together, it's um, when you're going through something that's wider, if, it's eight, if you're going down a driveway that's 18 feet wide, you're going to be more comfortable going in either direction than you would be going in a single direction in a, with a nine foot constraint. I agree. The, there are advantages and disadvantages to that. The advantage is somebody's going to go much slower on a nine foot driveway than they are going to even on a two way 18 foot drive. Um, so you're going to have automatically you're going to, you're going to slow the traffic. They're also going to have to make way for somebody coming out and coming in if they're coming the same way. If there's just that one way <coughs> In other towns, I've seen this 20 feet rather than 18. <laughs> I'm just thinking 18 was too big. Yeah. Yeah. You can do 16. Access. I've seen 16. Yeah. And what, again, remember that you know, if the tractor trailer is going to come in, it's going to come in once, twice, let's, let's say business is booming, it's probably going to come in once or twice a day. This is not a regular thing. They tend to come in in the morning or sort of later in the day. Um, it's, and those are things that can be, you can deal with as a matter of um, conditions of approval for special exceptions in terms of when you can have truck traffic if it becomes an issue in the area. I, 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 I go for the 18. I mean, it, the bigger it gets, it's going to just look like Walmart between those stores. So I think if it also gets too big, people are going to start parking there and then they're not going to be able to drive through there anyway. So if you do 0 to 18, it allows two buildings to abut each other on one side but have 
driveways on either side. Right. So you have that you can have that longer stretch. So I would recommend that you have zero to eighteen. On one side. Oh no, both sides. But you have to have so if you have zero, you have to have a minimum on one. You have to have a minimum of eighteen on one side. The maximum of eighteen on one side. Unless you got the neighbor. If you add up the two, let's let's think about it this way. You have you have two side yards. If you add them up, they shouldn't add up to more than eighteen. What that does is that forces one of two things. Forces either one ingress and one egress that are separated, mm -hmm. but only by nine feet okay. from the side yard. Yep. Or it forces one 18, maximum of 18 feet, with the building then push all the way over to the side and the ability for the adjoining property owner to abut, and then you have your longer face on the street that you're looking for. Okay. All right. Just to cover a couple of things quickly, the, um, your side yards and um, rear yards are, you know, generally the idea is you have enough room to maintain whatever structure you may have back there, whether it's a shed, a pool house, or whatever, uh, enough area to maintain it without really encroaching on the amount of usable property there. And again, I don't mind you were talking about the area of the downtown area of Woodbridge. We're not talking about residential A or B. We're not talking about parcels for the most part that have multiple acreages. forward to seeing those buildings. And you've taken out totally the minimum lot area. If someone wanted to build a series of townhouses that were 15 feet wide, it would be very narrow, but it's also all over Philadelphia. I'm not worried. Even too. But I'm, all, I'm also saying the way you set it up, because you set up lot width as a maximum, that you couldn't have an acre site, in effect. If your frontage is a maximum of 100 feet, that means it would have to be, if it was an acre site for argument's sake, it would be 100 with 400 feet going back. Right. Okay. The idea with this is that we're building that street wall in areas where we want people to populate by foot or by bicycle primarily. It doesn't mean that we're not, you know, we're, we haven't entered a fantasy world where we think people will not drive. We know everybody's going to drive. We're all going to get in our cars when we leave here and drive. Um, but the idea is that that doesn't become the consistent primary source of transportation. And what that does is it results in a, a much easier way to build a sense of community in an area when people are on foot. It's it's the difference between when you, when you go to New York City, the first thing you do is dump your car if you're um, like me who on occasion is crazy enough to drive in instead of the train. The first thing you want to do is where do I dump the car because yeah. I don't want to see it again until I have to get back and drive out. <coughs> Any other questions? Any other comments? I will um, at the risk of I, I don't you all have seen how comprehensive this is and it's really kind of um, can be kind of overwhelming. So I don't want to hand everybody toward the end of the summer, you know, two inches of paper to say, um, read it all again. What I'm going to try and do is, uh, if this makes sense to all of you, is if there are things that I'm looking at changing, 
that somehow have come up, there's an internal inconsistency within the document or something like that, or um, we know for sure that the reference, the cross-referencing within the document's not been done. That's also something that I prefer to do last, so I don't have to do it 18 times. Right. Um, I will try and highlight anything as I've done throughout anything that is a change from what we've talked about, um, I will highlight that in red so that we will be able to go through the document again, but hopefully we'll be able to do it as efficiently as we've done the other chapters. Um, and uh, you know, if you've got some change that you know we made, and, and you know, please by all means go back when, when you get the um, penultimate final draft. Um, go back and check it off. I'm not saying you shouldn't read the whole thing, but I'm also in touch with reality. When it goes to public hearing, yep. do we have to show all the changes from the existing to the proposed? No. You're going to adopt, my recommendation is that you adopt this as an entire document. Oh, I understand, but for the public hearing purpose, they don't have to see, the public doesn't have to be able to see what changes are being made? Not page by page, okay. section by section, because you're going to adopt it at, in its entirety as an entire document. Um, there's... What, what is the understanding of the process beyond that uh, after the public hearing? Uh, are we empowered to effectuate that change without referendum, without board of selection, selection approval? Yes. You have to. You have to have a public hearing. You're required to have a public hearing as P and Z, but you are the authority and the only authority <coughs> within Woodbridge that has the and yes, right can to override. And make changes. Ridiculous, but yes. The unelected board well, the, has exactly. the power. It's yeah, it's the first statute. call. So you'll see it again. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. It is ridiculous. Yes, we'll go to COG. Um, and uh, <laughs> if necessary, I'll be happy to go and make a presentation there or not. Sometimes COGs are fine with that, and sometimes they're not. I just think, like, never mind, that's your 10, do what you want. Um, they'll see the application, the individual applications that might affect adjoining municipalities. Um, but I'm certainly, you know, if, if they want a presentation on it, I'm certainly happy to do that. Um, and we'll do the final presentation as the application here. And I will be here for that in its entirety and any that people have concerns. You will also have the right. So at the public hearing, is there a summary of the change? There will be, because this is such an overhaul, the presentation will be more along the lines of, this is the area we're talking about. Um, we'll look at T3, T4, SD1, and, and the uh, revised park district present those separately so people can see exactly what uh, may be changing within each of those, uh, making it very clear that, the, again, there are no changes being proposed in any of this to residential A or residential B. Um, and then there will also be a map, so you'll be voting on two things. You'll be voting on amending the map, and you'll be voting on adopting in its entirety for all zones, not A and B, the new regulations. Except the definitions will affect. And the definitions will be included in the document. But they will apply to A and B also. They can, that's your choice, but the. Yeah, you can't have two separate um, definitions. No, they would all, it's all one section. Yeah, that's, all that's, the that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. So. You can put it wherever you want. <laughs> that, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm going to try very hard to make this as comprehensive as possible so that you don't end up with those issues. Um, I can't imagine that we will have two different de definitions 
No, you can't. Yeah, I don't think so. No, you can't. Right. I'm trying to make everybody's life easier, not harder. Any other questions, concerns, ideas? That was easy. No, I mean, it's actually, I mean, once you put everything in one sheet, it's kind of hard to have a problem with that. I mean, I think the heights, your heights are fine. It made sense. Great. Thank you. And again, everybody has my phone number and uh, email. And if you don't, you can certainly get to me through Chris or Terry. So, if you have any questions or concerns that come up. Um, so, uh, what and what do you have for us next? Just this. Next. This was this, and then you can start putting on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and give you a complete document. And so, you don't think that'll be available to the end of the summer, or? or it, it takes a little while <laughs> to put it together. <laughs> just, just egg it along here. Okay. We're going from DD to CD. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. We, I'm thinking. We. Ha oh no. Did you, oh, we have one more meeting. If you. I mean, we have one more meeting before August. If you need me to come to that meeting for something, I will. Let and and if you them. need to come to the meeting, you can go there. Welcome. Sure. <coughs> Neither of us is feeling that real pressing need. We'll see in September. Um, I'll see you in September. Great. Great. Terrific. Sounds like a movie. Okay. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, Leslie. It certainly was a song. Uh, could you do me a favor? Could you? I'm sorry. Could you email me this? So I have it on the computer. Thanks. When you when you get a chance, not you don't have to do it now. I mean, she sent it right. by email. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. I would make a motion to adjourn. Second. Four seconds. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Go thirds. Thanks. Aye. Enjoy. Thank you.